Hello, I'm Philip Duncan with your global weather extremes for the first Friday of September. And we are tracking a few tropical storms still in the Atlantic area and one in the Pacific. We're also tracking a cold change across a big part of Australia. And in the Northern Hemisphere, speaking of cold, the Arctic. The cold weather up there is now starting to grow. We're at that time of the year where, well, we've passed maybe the peak of summer. Although we might still be seeing some pretty hot weather across a few nations for at least another month. But let's try and make sense of it all. We kick off with the satellite map. We've added in there the rain radar. People ask about it. Uh, very few nations provide the rain radar for free, which is a shame. Uh, but America and Canada are two of the countries that do that. And as you can see, uh, a fair bit of rain around the Midwest, but actually it's the remnants of Hurricane Ida, which everyone's interested in. It's now moving off to the northeast. It's heading into Canada after disrupting Connecticut, New Jersey and New York. Uh, you know, civil emergencies declared and a travel ban in New York City until five o'clock on Thursday morning, which was pretty intense. So they've had some flooding through there, but now clearer skies coming through. And as we take a look at the other side, uh, Japan, that's another nation that provides rain radar. You can see some rain still coming through, feeding into South Korea. Uh, we've noticed it's pretty dry around North Korea. And around Australia, there is that cold front, and Australia is another country that provides rain radar not New Zealand, where I'm from. So let's take a look now at the rain forecast for the next 24 hours and the areas that are sort of of most interest around the planet. We've zoomed in a little bit more to be a bit more specific. So we've got those thunderstorms we just mentioned in the Midwest spreading eastwards, going into Minnesota and parts of Iowa and also um, around Kentucky and going in also to parts of Manitoba and getting into Ontario, those thunderstorms. At the other side, over into the northeast, the remnants of what was Hurricane Ida, it's now moving into Canada. So they've got it across Halifax, going out to St. John's, and then it goes out into the Atlantic, and that's the end of Ida. But boy, what a uh, interesting storm that has been for America and now Canada. And as we take a look across parts of India, uh, we can certainly see some bigger downpours out here. Gujarat. I hope I've said that properly. Please let me know if I haven't. It's really tough getting some new languages into your head. But over in the province of Gujarat, we're seeing some big downpours. Again, more of those afternoon thunderstorms as well intensifying and the similar story through Nepal and the Himalayas. So that's the rainfall in that part of the world. And we go a little bit further over towards Thailand and there's just a few more downpours, the usual sort of thunderstorms, mostly over here in Myanmar. All right, let's move along to the other side of the world and not a lot of rain falling here, but it is needed. And we are just seeing a little bit of rain getting into Argentina. We were in drought in parts of Argentina, Chile in a 10 year drought. So we need rain, not much showing up at this stage, unfortunately. Okay, sticking with the Southern Hemisphere, where is the area with the largest amount of low pressure right now? It's all circling around Antarctica. Here is the South Pole. And we've got New Zealand, South Island, Tasmania, Australia over there. And we've got South America just here. So we've got some big storms, some very large low pressure systems going around uh, Antarctica right now, as we would expect at this time of the year. This is the biggest one just to the southeast of New Zealand, where I am. And in the Northern Hemisphere, the largest area of low pressure is actually going across a large portion of Russia, where there are some thunderstorms and downpours, heads off into some parts of Europe, but it is mostly dry as you head towards the UK. And that's because the UK is underneath this powerful high pressure zone still. It is still the largest sort of high pressure zone in the Northern Hemisphere. There is a cooler northerly coming down. That's the reason why your temperatures have been down over the last couple of days, but I've got some good news. Summer comes back as that system moves across, you'll start to get more of that airflow coming out of parts of Europe and that will lift your temperatures up places like London getting back into sort of the mid to upper 20 degrees as we go through in the next few days. All right, uh, high pressure in the Southern Hemisphere is again, where I am in New Zealand, an enormous area of high pressure, which is about the width of Australia. So 4,000, 5,000 kilometers across, and that is it parked right here, bringing some settled weather after a very stormy week to Auckland, at least on Monday with flooding and thunderstorms. Temperatures are dropping across Australia. There is a cold front moving along through the southern portion of it. So this is the departure from normal. And what you're seeing in the blue here is actually, uh, you know, four to eight degrees below normal and the red four to eight degrees above normal and the darker shading here over eight degrees above average. So we're seeing warm weather 
ahead of a cold front that's moving through. On the animated one, you can see what happens. There's the cold morning. As the sun starts to rise up, it warms up here and gets even hotter up here. That's getting into the late 30s into the 40s around Darwin. But you can clearly see that cold front stops about here. So Adelaide and Melbourne and Hobart get it today and then Sydney gets it as we go into Saturday. Up in the Northern Hemisphere, this is the North Pole, right here is the North Pole. Wanted to show you this temperature map to show you how the cold around the Arctic area is now spreading out. It's going out across Greenland. They've had a cold couple of days over Greenland and we've got cold weather now pushing in across the northern parts of Canada, especially up here in the Arctic Circle. Alert, which is the northernmost airport in the world, uh, they've got some pretty cold weather now starting to spread through there. Darkness is approaching, you know, in a, another three weeks, it'll be permanently dark in those northern areas. So we're starting to see that cold creep further afield across the planet. All right, the current thunderstorms as we recorded this, so that would be going into Thursday night for America. And as you can see, the remnants of Ida bringing in some thunderstorms to Canada around Halifax, but it's much clearer and calmer following the remnants of Ida, but we've still got thunderstorms down around the Gulf Coast. That's because we've got that humidity left over from behind Ida, and that humidity also remains up here. There's a line of thunderstorms right up into Canada. And over in Europe, actually pretty quiet at the moment, much quieter than it's been. Got a few thunderstorms out over here, but uh, really it's sort of seeing Spain, parts of the Mediterranean getting most of those thunderstorms, and then further down here around Sudan and Eritrea. Okay, now the image of the day that we're going to end on is Hurricane Larry out at sea at the moment. It is not likely to be affecting land, although if I was in Bermuda, I would certainly be keeping an eye on it. It's a severe system. Uh, it's around category three or four over the next couple of days, likely to remain at sea for now, but it does go closer to North America. So please do, if you're living in Bermuda or anywhere on this map, please keep up to date with the National Hurricane Center out of the US. Um, tropical storms are sort of easing a little bit at the moment. There's another one out of the Pacific Ocean, halfway between Japan and Hawaii. That one is also falling apart. But I think this one gets the image of the day for today, Friday, as we end, um, well, the first week of September couple of days in. That's all from me. Have a great and safe weekend. We will see you again on Monday, our time, which is Sunday night, for those of you who are watching in North America. And thank you for all the comments we're getting on YouTube. It's been really overwhelming in a positive way. So thanks very much. If you've got any suggestions or ideas, please do, please do keep them coming. Uh, we try to respond to all of you. And uh, we'll see how we go as we continue doing these videos while I'm in lockdown in Auckland, New Zealand. We'll see you next week.